Very good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, Michael, for that uh, very uh, clear introduction. Firstly, I would just like to uh, just add on to what Mike said just now. Um, I'm with the Royal Malaysian Police, but uh, seconded for a period of three years now with the ASEAN Nepal Secretariat. Um, I would also like to send the regards from the Executive Director who could not be with us today, so I'll be representing him today just to give you a quick overview of what we call the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network, or APFSN. So not to take away anything from this morning's presentation, but I need to clear a few facts before I go on further. Firstly, we saw on the slides this morning that uh, they have the Asian Forensic Science Network. So that is actually a different body which, uh, which I don't represent. And now what we are going to present is about the, the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network. The only clear difference there is, is the word police. So basically, ASEAN Nepal, to start with, is a police-to-police -police collaboration between the Southeast Asian police forces which we have within the region. And uh, the cooperation covers many areas which we talked about today, in particular human trafficking, cyber crimes, and the area of focus in this particular workshop on counter-terrorism. So what I'm going to just explain here is that three years ago, in, during the ASEAN Nepal conference, we have an annual conference every year, the Royal Thai Police mooted the idea of coming to have what we have, the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network. So when they first mooted the idea, there were two ideas we were juggling with, whether to discuss to have a formal institute, as in a building, as in a complex, or to form a network. So they decided to form a working group, which the Royal Thai Police again successfully organized in Bangkok. And during that working group, they decided to formalize what we call an ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network, which apparently is more of a practical version rather than going for a building, which will have many financial and logistical issues. Then subsequently, the uh, Philippines in Tagaytay City, we organized what we call the second working group, which came about to set what we call the terms of reference for this particular network. And the terms of reference refer to what the forensic network actually seeks to do. And uh, in this particular journey, I would like to quickly put on record also my uh, sincere thanks to Interpol in particular, especially to Mike O'Connell, and also to uh, Angela and also Antonio, because we were just having coffee during the Asian Regional Conference. And this simple discussion over coffee has resulted in today's workshop. So we just want to again illustrate the power of networking. So besides the police-to-police -police collaboration which we have via the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network, which I'll touch upon after this, I would just like to reiterate here the power of meeting people. Besides the expertise which we have here now, we have representatives from the NCBs, we have from the counter-terrorism units, and we have from the forensic experts which we have from all over the region and beyond. Besides all this <coughs> technical expertise, I think what is more important today is what we do during breakout sessions, what we do over coffee, over lunch, over a chat around the corner. At the end of the day, these beautiful relationships which we form will be able to lead us to bigger things. So if, at the very least, we could come together and just get to know each other better, we can form a better understanding and improve upon our networking. So coming back to this Forensic Science Network, basically, for a start, we have started to identify who are the focal points within the various ASEAN member countries. So within the ASEAN member countries, we have got forensic capabilities in different countries on different platforms. In some countries, the police force is the main agency doing forensics, as far as investigative forensics is concerned. In some agencies, in some countries, they have the medical units, they have the chemistry department, they have the military. So we've got a, a big variety of organizations involved in this. But what we are trying to do within ASEAN Nepal is, for a start, is to have this police-to-police -police networking within the police forces within the ASEAN region. And also, not forgetting, we can also interface and network with Interpol, with Europol, and also the dialogue partners which we have within, within the ASEAN region. For example, we also network with our dialogue partners to name a few countries, Australia, New Zealand, who are on board. We go as far as China, Russia, Turkey. So these countries are on board with us. And besides that, this forensic network also seeks to work with other stakeholders beyond this region. Let me give you an example. We also had various working visits with forensic people all over the world. And some of the agencies which we decided to network with is, for example, the 
International Association of Forensic Institutes, IFI, which is based in Turkey. So we had a working visit with them, and they have immense capability to help us with our forensic uh, development within the region. And recently at the uh, recent conference in uh, Jakarta, the 35th ASEAN-Nepal conference, Turkey is now on board with us as a full dialogue partner, and they have pledged to work with us not only on forensics, but on other areas of crime. So you see, our networking is not only within Southeast Asia, so to speak, but it is beyond the region. And then again, to draw upon the work which we have with uh, Interpol, in fact, this morning it was mentioned about Operation Sunbird, but Mike, with your permission, I would like to go back just a little bit further. We had another more localized operation within the ASEAN region, which they call Operation DOVE, D-O-V-E. So it was a capacity building exercise held in KLIA, the airport in Kuala Lumpur, at the Thai border, where Interpol most kindly assisted to train our officers on site, do real operations on site, and also secure equipment for these people over there. So this was the beginning. And recently we had a more successful operation held here at the IGCI through Operation Sunbird. So what we're trying to say is that with the formation of the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network, which terms of reference refer to capacity building among ASEAN police forces, number two, sharing of best practices, sharing of databases, and last but not least, also working out various good forums like this for us to bring together the expertise. So in the journey, because the title given today is Building the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network, let me quickly inform the audience that this forensic network was only formalized just a couple of weeks ago in Jakarta, where the 10 chiefs of police of the ASEAN region have decided and agreed upon to form this particular network. But please bear with me, ladies and gentlemen, it is a police-to-police -police networking forum. But then again, as I mentioned just now, in a real-life situation, the police do not work alone. We also work with other various agencies which are involved at the crime scene. And these agencies are what we call other stakeholders, and they are also part of our networking exercise. So to give a simple example, to illustrate a simple case, let us say we have a terrorism-related event in any of the member countries. Of course, the sovereignty of the country is respected. The uh, request from the country affected will be to the other parties involved in the region. And of course, we will have to design some protocols as to how we work together. And in the pipeline also is what we call the ASEAN Communication and also Coordination Protocol on Crisis Management, which is in particular also another overlapping, overarching uh, function which we have to cover for closer cooperation in the wake of a terrorist attack. So this protocol actually is due to be signed in Malaysia next year, whereby so far we have got almost all member countries agreeing to sign this protocol so that in the event of a terrorist attack or event or catastrophe, there will be this mechanism to pool our resources to come together. And if I may mention here also, Interpol will also be a party to that particular document. So this is also in the pipeline and we should see it, see it being signed in the next Asinapol conference to be held in Malaysia somewhere in July. So coming back to this forensic science network, amongst the uh, areas which I would just quickly like to touch upon is that we are also formulating what we call procedures to coordinate and disseminate information amongst forensic science expertise through the member countries, and also to promote and facilitate capacity building initiatives and to continuously seek system development to counter the terrorism-related events in the country. So let us see what we have to look at now. We have, of course, the radicalization of foreign fighters, one aspect of it. My good friend Simon Fernand is over there, Project Pacific. Then we also have the procurement of uh, IEDs, explosives, precursors for this particular type of activities. And we also have this financial procurement of finances to finance to fuel this particular activity. So all of this not only requires forensics and the aftermath of an event, but if I, if I may just, if you could bear with me, it also involves tracking them before the event happens. So there are, there are also things which happened before. And of course, normally criminals, they set a pattern. There will be an audit trail. There will be trails various we can follow. And we are trying to look at these kind of aspects <clears throat> where we can share resources within the country. And normally, when we look at these kind of activities, normally we have multi-agency approaches we have information entrenched in various organizations. So how we are trying to bring this together within the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network. So the network, it does not signify a complex or a building like this, 
but it is a collaborative mechanism. So this is what I'm trying to impart here. And uh, in the implementation and action plan, we're also trying to coordinate amongst member countries the uh, effective sharing and also the uh, involvement of dialogue partners, as I said just now. We have many dialogue partners who are willing to come aboard with us. And let me give you an example which is not so clear. For example, we have activities of uh, human trafficking where we may find lots of uh, dead bodies, decayed bodies. We recently even found a niche to work with what we call ICRC, the International Committee of the Red Cross. Even they are involved in certain activities which are on the forensic areas, and they have expertise which they can share with the ASEAN region, for example. And uh, in a couple of weeks from now, I'll be attending another forum on forensics also as to how the International Committee of the Red Cross is now going to partner with ASEAN Nepal to work with the regional police forces in order to assist in the process of identifying these perpetrators. And also in ensuring that the human rights are also observed, for example, so that these bodies will be treated with humanely, bearing in mind the trauma of the families. So these are some of the aspects which we're looking at. And uh, of course, the other one is, of course, we understand that there are different laws in all over the various countries. We also understand that there are various forensic standards in the various countries. Different countries refer to different standards. Of course, if you use the word harmonization, it's a big word. It's not easy to harmonize all these processes all over the world. But of course, there are some internationally accepted models where we could probably refer to. That I will leave, I leave it to the technical experts. It will suffice for me to hear, just to reiterate once again in the short presentation that the ASEAN Police Forensic Science Network is now a reality. Very soon we'll be publishing the contact and focal points on our ASEAN Nepal website. And we seek upon the cooperation also, as I said, from the other players beyond the region, especially Interpol, to work closely with us. Also, not only to coordinate workshops like this, but to also conduct training and real-time operations so that we can realize the objective of this forensic network. So let me also mention that uh, either at the end of this year or early next year, the Indonesian National Police will be hosting the first ASEAN Police Forensic Science Meeting. So this meeting will bring together the forensic focal persons and also other stakeholders to come together to sit down in a, in a platform something like this to see how we can come out with a blueprint, a working plan, and also to come out with certain detailed schemes as to how we can go about doing real-time cooperation. And uh, wherever I go, I would again like to reiterate another point quickly is that at the end of the day, for those who are involved in real-time operations, if you could agree with me or bear with me rather, it is not the written protocol, it is not the written agreement, it is not what we sign, what we ratify. End of the day is how I can network with my colleague in Interpol, how I can network with you, ladies and gentlemen, how we can work on a person-to-person -person basis, which really counts. So I hope that this particular platform has allowed me just to quickly mention what the ASEAN Police Forensic Site Net Network is all about. And as I said, it is, it is still in a state of infancy, as we just launched it in uh, Jakarta recently. We will give you updates from time to time on this particular matter. And I'm free to chat with anyone when you have coffee later on. And also you can keep in touch with me so that we can get further details how we can work closer on an agency-to-agency -agency basis. Thank you very much.